Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be at this workshop and talk about my research on general meta-learning. General meta-learning is about automatically designing new learning algorithms that generalize. I am Louis Kirsch, a PhD student at the Swiss AI Lab. I'm working with Jürgen Schmidhuber in Lugano, a beautiful Swiss city at the border of the Alps. My research at ETIA focuses on meta-learning, specifically one central question. How can we replace human research for learning algorithms with an automated process? Research on learning algorithm design is one of our core activities in deep learning and reinforcement learning at the moment. But let's be honest with ourselves, this process is often tedious trial and error. And many decisions have to be made, and there are numerous possibilities for suboptimal choices. Meta-learning promises to automate many of these choices. It gives us the opportunity to leverage data at scale for learning algorithm design that is difficult for a human to consider. In the broadest sense, I like to think of uh, meta-learning as minimizing the inductive biases that we put into our system. These aspirations are very related to the paper on AI generating algorithms by Jeff Kloon. So let's first look at the current state of meta-learning. Meta-learning has made huge progress in recent years. I want to just highlight two different works here among thousands. MAML, for example, has been hugely successful as a method to quickly adapt to new tasks at meta-test time. This makes learning more sample efficient through meta-learning. Meta-learning has also been used for domain adaptation. That means meta-training is done across environments with different physical properties, which allows adapting from simulation to the real world. Also note that I focus on RL at the moment, but the main idea is equally applied to supervised learning. Given these advances, we need to remember my goal that I formulated at the very beginning, to replace human research on learning algorithms. So what does designing learning algorithms look like? Let's say we are given an RL environment such as this lunar lander. In conventional RL, we as researchers would invent a learning algorithm, say a policy gradient, to maximize the expected reward. We expect this algorithm to not only work in the specific environment, but to be applicable to a wide range of them. In contrast, Current meta-learning would not fit this bill. The meta-learned algorithm will probably be able to adapt to variants of lunar lander, but when we want to use the algorithm in the hopper environment, it would not generalize. And this does not fit at all with the goal of replacing human-engineered learning algorithms. Imagine I would invent a new learning algorithm that only works on lunar lander. No conference would accept my paper. So what I am interested in is general meta-learning. General meta-learning is about meta-learning general learning algorithms. The meta-learned algorithms have to be reusable across a wide range of environments and tasks. So basically, they fulfill a similar function to human-engineered algorithms. And my first work on this was Meta-General, which appeared at the end of 2019. Meta-General stands for Meta-Learning General Reinforcement Learners. So before we dive right in, I will give you a quick overview for what to expect. We will begin exploring general meta-learning with my work on meta-general. I will then introduce my latest work, Variable Shared Meta-Learning, which aims at minimizing inductive biases while producing powerful general learning algorithms. To motivate this approach, we will ask ourselves what are the necessary inductive biases for meta-learning and what would be the simplest meta-learner? To answer this question, we will look back at the history of meta-learning, learn learning rules, fast ways and meta-RNNs. We will show how variable shared meta-learning can learn to do backpropagation and invent novel learning algorithms from scratch. And finally, we will look at the bigger picture of general meta-learning and AI generation, something I call the bootstrapping AI conjecture. So let's start with meta-general, improving generalization and meta-reinforcement learning using learned objectives. This is joint work with Schurt van Stenkiste and Jürgen Schmidhuber, which appeared at ICLR. In this work, we represent our learning algorithm similar to human-engineered variants. We define an objective function L, parameterized by an LSTM that produces a loss. Some of the inputs depend on the policy parameters, such as the predicted action distribution or the hidden state. And this allows us to learn the policy using the objective function by backpropagation. A policy gradient, for example, is in the space of learnable algorithms. Here, the subset of inputs required would be the rewards and action log probabilities. Meta-general has two phases, meta-training and meta-testing. We first look at meta-training, which involves meta-learning the parameters alpha of the objective function. In meta-general, a population of agents situated in different environments make use of a single objective function as their learning algorithm. 
At the same time, their collective experiences also serve to improve the objective function via meta-learning. More specifically, the experience of each agent can be used to compute a gradient on alpha, as you will see next. Given the current agent parameters phi, we will first apply the current objective function to yield updated parameters phi prime. Next, we will evaluate the updated agent in different states and use a Q function to estimate how well the updated policy is able to perform. Notice how, by unrolling a computational graph, the output of Q is now a function of the parameters alpha of the objective function. This allows us to calculate a second order gradient in the direction that we expect the objective function to improve most. We then repeat this procedure for each agent in the population and average the gradients to improve the objective function. Because of this formulation, we don't have to discard the policies after each meta-learning step. Instead, we maintain a diverse and persistent population of policies and make few updates to each agent for a single meta-update. Further, by using Q-values, we can increase the meta-learning sample efficiency through off-policy data. After we have meta-trained an objective function, we can discard all current policies and proceed with meta-testing. We initialize a new RL agent from scratch and place it in a new environment. Instead of using a human-engineered algorithm, we use the MetaLearned algorithm to improve the policy. In the following experimental evaluation, we have MetaTrained with a population of 20 agents, 10 of them acting in half cheetah and 10 in lunar lander. Due to the sample efficiency of MetaTraining, we only use 600,000 environment interactions for each agent. We compare to two baselines, R squared and EPG. R squared is an instance of a meta-RNN, which we will discuss later in much more detail. Compared to R squared, we expect meta-general to perform better in terms of generalization, because it separates the policy and the learning algorithm. This prevents hardcoding too specific information about the environment directly during meta-training. Compared to EPG, which also has such a separation, we expect to be much more sample efficient due to our agent population and of policy data. In our experiments, we train R squared for 100 million and EPG for 1 billion steps. First, we meta-test a new agent on Lunar Lander, an environment it was previously trained on. Our baseline R squared immediately achieves optimal performance, whereas EPG doesn't seem to find a good solution given the number of interactions we considered. Our trained objective function successfully reaches the optimal policy, and the best performing objective function gets there even faster. When testing the baseline R squared on Hopper, a significantly different environment, it appears to have overfit to the training distribution. In contrast, our MetaLearned objective function generalizes and allows learning even in the significantly different environment. Not only does MetaGeneral generalize better than previous meta-learning algorithms, it even largely outperforms human-engineered ones such as on-policy reinforce, off-policy reinforce, and PPO. On cellular environments, the MetaLearned algorithm is even competitive to DPG. More experiments such as ablations, additional environments, and an analysis of the learning behavior can be found in the paper. In summary, MetaGeneral is a framework to MetaLearned objective functions that generalize to environments that are quite different from the training distribution. Beyond MetaGeneral, there have been a few other new works on general meta-learning. For example, learn policy gradients by O et al. is similar to MetaGeneral, but also meta-learns the nature of the value function, and they demonstrate generalization to Atari. AutoML0 by Real et al. defines a programming language with vectorized primitives and performs discrete search over that to rediscover learning algorithms. And Alet et al. meta-learn curiosity objectives by searching over a computational graph of loss functions. But perhaps now you're thinking, wasn't the original goal of general meta-learning to remove complexity instead of adding it? While we were able to meta-learn generalizing learning algorithms, we still relied on many inductive biases and human-engineered complexity. And when stacking these building blocks, there are many opportunities for suboptimal choices. In meta-general, there is backpropagation, replay buffers, loss functions, value functions, etc. Which one of those are really needed though, and which ones can we discard? This question has been debated in panels frequently. Continual learning and meta-learning workshops likewise. One common position is that updating weights akin to fast weights or learned learning rules is the most straightforward approach. Others hold against and argue that meta-learning and activations is the simplest thing to do. Can we unify these seemingly different frameworks? My new work on variable shared meta-learning might be able to. Variable shared meta-learning is the next topic of this talk, VSML for short. This new framework allows for meta-learning backpropagation and novel general learning algorithms. 
To be able to understand variable shared meta-learning, we have to first take a look at the history of meta-learning. Crucially, all the approaches I will showcase do not require hard-coded backpropagation in the inner loop. The first category we look into is about learned learning rules and fast weights, and the second one about learning in activations, the meta-RNNs. We will then generalize fast weights to derive the variable shared meta-RNN. Further, we link it to the meta-RNN. And finally, we show how variable shared meta-RNNs can implement backpropagation purely in the recurrent dy dynamics and learn novel general learning algorithms from scratch. So, let's start with, with the learned learning rules. Learned learning rules are basically an architectural extension of a standard neural network. They are perhaps the most intuitive way to parameterize a learning algorithm. On the right, we see a neuron XA that is multiplied by WAB to produce the activations XB after summing in other inputs. And this is given by the equation at the bottom. The learning rule is depicted in green. It defines a parameterized function that takes as an input activations, the current weights, and some feedback signal and produces updated weights. We call the learning rule parameters theta, the meta variables vm, and the weights learn variables vl. Fast weights can be seen as a generalization of learned learning rules. Many different flavors exist. But the approach basically describes slow neural networks that generate or modify the fast weights of another or the same neural network. On the right is such a fast weight mechanism, where a slow network generates the weights of a fast network conditioned on the input. Other variants update fast weights locally, auto product based, gated, or even self referential. And the well known hyper networks are also a kind of fast weight approach. Learned learning rules and fast weights have recently seen a new surge in interest. The approach is quite versatile and thus, in principle, holds great promise for general meta learning. Although, to this point, broad generalization ability has not been shown yet. So we may ask ourselves, are learned learning rules and fast weights the way to go for future general meta-learning systems? While updating weights seems intuitive, it does introduce quite a bit of complexity in terms of how to define the learning rule architecture. But perhaps we don't need this complexity. Let's talk about the other class of algorithms, RNNs that can meta-learn in their activations. I just abbreviate these as meta-RNNs. Here, a simple RNN can implement a learning algorithm in its parameters, the meta variables Vm. The learned variables Vl are the state and activations of this RNN. Seb Hochreiter introduced this concept of meta learning and algorithm in LSTMs in 2001. The crucial ingredient is to add a feedback signal, say the label in supervised learning or reward in RL, to the LSTM inputs, and to not reset the LSTM state between trials. This allows for learning to happen based on that feedback signal in the activations. And this was also extended to the RL setting by Duan et al. and Wang et al. in 2016. At this point, meta-RNNs seem much simpler than fast weights and learning rules. There is a problem though. Meta-RNNs have a very bad variable ratio. So what do I mean by variable ratio? An RNN has O of n activations and O of n squared weights. Thus, there are only O of n variables available for learning, VL, whereas O of n squared meta variables, VM, encode the learning algorithm. And this makes the learning algorithm overparameterized and prone to overfitting, as I demonstrated, them, demonstrated in Meta General. In contrast, learned learning rules and fast weights have a better ratio. There, we only have a single learning rule, and thus, there are only few meta variables which describe the learning algorithm, but many variables for learning. Though remember that these approaches also introduced a lot of complexity. So the question is, can we have the best of both worlds? And the answer is yes. Variable sharing and sparsity can be used to unify learned learning rules, fast weights, and meta-RNNs into a simple framework. And this brings us to the variable shared meta-learning. We will now generalize fast weights and learned learning rules to derive the variable shared meta-RNN. Starting from learned weight updates and fast weights is probably most intuitive. On the right is the previous picture with a single weight that is updated by some learning rule according to the meta variables Vm. The forward computation is defined by a fixed forward function, for example, a multiplication followed by a sum in 10h. In the following, I demonstrate that this complicated setup can be made much simpler. 
First, we change the computational graph by recognizing that the weights can be interpreted as just another activation. The learned variables now include all the states S1 to S3. We now expand the connectivity between the states to make it a complete recurring neural network. This basically merges um, the update rule and the forward function, and the forward function is no longer fixed, but can also be learned. To support multiplicative interactions, like the activation weight multiplication we previously had, um, we use LSTMs instead of RNNs. Some states may change faster, like activations, and other may change slower, like weights, and this is determined by the LSTM. We are of course not restricted to the original three states, but can add more states to the RNN. And at this point, we have simplified a forward function and weight update rule to a single generic RNN. While in practice we use an LSTM, notationally we will stick with a vanilla RNN, given by the familiar equation. We unify hidden states, inputs and outputs into the state S without any loss of generality. Now we get to the variable sharing in our framework. In our derivation, we have only focused on a single weight to this point. Usually, we have quadratically many weights, and we thus duplicate our RNN along two axes with its parameters w and b tight. We still need some interaction between the RNNs. One option is to simply connect them fully, or use some other sparse connectivity. For our purposes, we connect them like weights in a neural network, and this allows us to have a simple mapping to the forward path of a neural network. After adding the interaction term, we obtain the variable shared meta-RNN, a very simple equation describing a very powerful general meta-learner. From now on, we focus on understanding and interpreting this variable shared meta-RNN. Let's start with this not so obvious connectivity on the right. The interaction term takes information from each column, sums it up, and then distributes them across the row. This can be visually observed on the right. If we arrange the visualization to a neural network, then it looks like this. So we can basically interpret our variable shared meta-RNN as implementing some neural network. And these summed results can be interpreted as multidimensional neurons, while the interaction matrix V in orange and red describes connectivity. We can also untie some RNN states to have something like non-recurrent layers, and the meta-variables, here the parameters of these RNNs, remain shared. Let's look inside these RNNs. The state variables S, or a subset thereof, can be interpreted as the multidimensional weights of a neural network, representing the learned variables. Both the forward function and uh, learning can be integrated in the recurrent dynamics. These dynamics are specified by the meta-variables w and v. Now that we understood how variable shared meta-learning generalizes learned learning rules and fast weights, let's look at the connection to meta-RNNs. The first observation is that if we set m equals 1 and n equals 1 and feed all the data into a single RNN, we, re we recover the standard meta-RNN. And the other interpretation is that for any m and n, our variable shared meta-RNN is a standard meta-RNN where the weight matrix is sparse and has shared entries. In this case, the data is distributed across the RNNs. Finally, let's look at some experiments. Meta-learning backpropagation and uh, novel learning algorithms. So previously, we argued we don't want the fixed inductive bias of backpropagation in our system. But of course, a powerful meta-learner should be able to meta-learn an algorithm such as backpropagation. In fact, our LSTM can implement backpropagation purely in its recurrent dynamics. To demonstrate this for VSML, we perform a process we call learning algorithm cloning. We optimize our variable shared meta-RNN to first store a weight w and bias b as a subset of its state. We then also optimize it to compute tan h of x times w plus b to implement the forward function. And finally, we optimize it to update w and b according to the backpropagation algorithm. We optimize for backpropagation on just random data. And we do this such that multiple iterations in the RNN correspond to the backward pass and backpropagation. And as you can see on the right, this works fairly well, as the angle between the estimated and true gradient is reduced to only a few degrees in the course of meta-training. We now run the RNN on MNIST and fashion MNIST. 
This is the regular batch setting, which we implement by averaging LSTM states between mini batches. In the plot, we see that just by running the variable shared meta RNN forward, the loss on the y axis reduces significantly. For reference, the final loss corresponds to 78% and 63% test accuracy after 4000 steps. Compared to standard SGD, this is by no means state of the art, but demonstrates the flexibility of variable shared meta learning to implement common algorithms such as backpropagation. Another possibility is to meta learn supervised learning entirely from scratch. Different to before, we perform online learning on MNIST without any batching, feeding one input at a time. And in the following time step, the prediction arrow is fed as an input. First, the variable shared meta RNN is meta trained on MNIST to minimize cross entropy from random initializations. During meta testing, we plot the total running accuracy on all previous inputs on the y axis, thus starting with low values in the beginning of learning, but then the total accuracy rises very quickly. Furthermore, learning turns out to be much faster compared to backpropagation with Adam. But it gets better. The resulting LSTM can be run unmodified for meta testing on an entirely different dataset, here Fashion MNIST. It still performs learning fairly well, meaning we have meta learned a general learning algorithm. If we compare this to the standard meta RNN, we see that our baseline horribly overfits. And it still performs slightly better than online backpropagation. Um, this result is quite remarkable, as such strong generalization is achieved without using any hard-coded gradients during meta-testing, purely by running the LSTM forward. So, in summary, we have introduced variable shared meta-learning, a simple variable sharing and sparsity principle that is used to construct variable shared meta-RNNs. This allows for general meta-learning, where the number of learned variables is much bigger than the meta-variables. We can meta-learn backprop and other learning algorithms in the recurrent dynamics of those RNNs. Everything is a variable. There is no precise distinction between a weight and an activation. Variables we thought of as activations can be interpreted as weights. The rate at which these variables change depends on the LSTM. Variable shared meta-RNNs meta-learn both the forward function and the learning algorithm. In this talk, we have seen two examples of general meta-learners. First of all, meta-general, meta-learned RL algorithms that could generalize to entirely different RL environments from the Mujoku suite. To achieve this, we meta-learned objective functions using second-order gradients. On the other hand, variable shared meta-learning discarded many inductive biases. It implemented backpropagation purely in its recurrent dynamics and meta-learned a supervised learning algorithm from scratch. Finally, I want to spend the last few minutes on some high-level ideas for the future of general meta-learning. Let's assume we have the perfect general meta-learner. What environments and tasks will we even run it on? Let's say we have a hard optimization problem we deeply care about, like building a spaceship and flying to Mars. It surely will be almost impossible to directly meta-learn learning algorithms on this problem, or even directly optimize for it. So what do we do? A frequently suggested solution for this problem is unsupervised RL. We could um, generate environments or tasks according to some principle and use them as a surrogate optimization problem. For example, artificial curiosity and learning progress, empowerment, the minimal criterion co-evolution, or some engineered curriculum. Unfortunately, there is quite some human engineering involved with these approaches, and it's not quite clear which one to choose. Perhaps we can avoid this somehow. How about meta-learning unsupervised objectives? Um, this is a kind of chicken and egg issue, because then we would be back at the difficult credit assignment problem. Alternatively, perhaps we could run some a life like simulation with some minimal criterion for valid solutions. And while this sounds promising, in practice this will probably be a very undirected process and thus expensive to run. But perhaps there is a solution. We could introduce inductive biases to make credit assignment feasible, but make sure those are reversible by meta-learning in the future. I call this the bootstrapping AI conjecture. Basically, we could embed an initial human-engineered learning algorithm and unsupervised objective into our general meta-learner. Crucially, this is a reversible inductive bias that can be overwritten by the meta-learner later on. And this allows for learning in the absence of reward from manually defined difficult tasks. And uh, with learning progression, the credit from the tasks of interest can be used to automatically steer the method of problem invention. With that, I want to close my talk. Granted, at the moment, humans are still the better meta-optimizers for AI systems. But I'm optimistic about general meta-learning, the pursuit of a future where learning algorithms are invented by software instead of humans.